Okay, I'm trying to pop out this uh, Shabbat teaching on brokenness. Um, our first scripture will be Matthew chapter 5, verses 2 through 12. We want to see what the Bible has to say about brokenness. There's a reason and a purpose for being broken, for experiencing brokenness. You know, if you don't ever experience brokenness, then you'll get too high, high-minded, you know, self-righteous. You know, you can't make it in. So sometimes God has to allow things to come into your life, to happen to you, so that, you know, he can break you down, so he can, you know, humble you. You know, sometimes we get to smell on ourselves too big or too much. And God needs to allow something to happen to us to remind us that we're not him. That, you know, we're not invincible. Let's go to scripture. It says, Matthew chapter 5, verses 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit, these are the humble people. Not that you ain't got no money. You know, it could include that, you know. But the poor in spirit is those who are humble. Those are who aren't trying to be bigger than they are. Those who ain't trying to ostracize themselves more or, you know, be out there so big that they can't be touchable. You know, um, bless our... They that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You know, going back to empathy, you know, you got to have empathy for people that mourn. Blessed are those that mourn. You know, mourning comes because something has died. Something has left their life. Could be a divorce, could be, you know, a physical death, could be a spiritual death. It could be any kind of death, but it could be your death to yourself, your own flesh. So blessed are those who mourn. You know, sometimes, you know, coming out of the world, we mourn the things that we used to do. We want to, you know, some of us want to kick it, be at the club, want to hang around, be in the limelight, all that. But this walk with Christ, you can't be in that and walk with Christ because the gate is narrow. The broad gate is the one that's leading to hell. Um, you mourn the things that you used to do, the things that your flesh wanted to do. Brokenness, like I say, comes to get you in right position with the Lord. He got on the cross, he was broken. His flesh was broken. But his spirit, his spirit was never broken. His spirit, he did, he, I got, I'd say all the time, he could have got down at any given time. He could have got down. He didn't have to stay up there. He was God. He knew who he was. So we mourn the things that, you know, we have loss of. That, you know, that take a loss. You know, that we have to let go of. Because we can't take everything into the kingdom. If it ain't of God, we can't take it. So therefore, you know, we see people getting things and acquiring things, and we wish we had those type of things, but the way they got them may not be holy. And so we mourn, you know, certain things. We mourn idols, things that we look at as idols. You know, money is an idol. That's if, if you serving money and not money not serving you. Um, his, his righteousness, his, his grace comforts us, is sufficient for us. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. What well, miss one? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek, you know, the timid. We ain't talking about the prideful, the ones that's out there beating their chest, the arrogant, the narcissistic. We talking about those that are meek, those that are kind, timid, you know, they have peace. They have the love of Christ flowing on the inside of them. They're not trying to puff themselves up. That's the meek. They shall inherit the earth. You know, 
people can trust people that's meek, you know, because they not they don't have their own agenda. You know, people will come and bless people, you know, they, you know, fellowship with people that's meek. You know, people get, you know, they, they start thinking, you know, what's going on with you when you got all this other agenda going on? When you got all these secrets and things trying to hide, when you trying to pump yourself up bigger than everybody else, people, you know, that's suspect to me. So that ain't going to inherit much. But those who are meek, those who are kind, loving, timid, people know that they can trust them because, you know, they're predictable. Unpredictable people, yeah, that's sexy to a lot of people. You know, a lot of women especially, that's sexy. But that being unpredictable, living that unpredictable life, you don't never know what that man gonna do. You don't never know where he gonna be. You don't never know if he gonna be right with you, if he gonna be honest with you. You don't know, that unpredictable. That's not good. That I mean, being um, living with somebody that's unpredictable will stress you out. Because there's no peace in that. It always keeps you on your toes. You know, I understand boring, you know, you have to tune it up or whatever. But if you got somebody, you know, that is always confusion and causing havoc and chaos in life, you know, like an accident waiting to happen, that will send you into a heart attack, stress. You can't, you can't have peace and live like that. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Those who seek God, who seek being righteous, who seek um, doing things right, who seek loving on others, loving on people, not somebody who's trying to get over, not somebody who got an agenda. Those who seek, you know, hunger and thirst after righteousness, helping people, feeding people, you know, the love of Christ is the righteousness. And his love turns back and fills you. I'm, I I'd be so full. You know, running around here helping people, making people's hearts smile. I'm so full. You know, and I'm doing it so much to where I don't even think about, you know, when my heart's not smiling. Because my heart is smiling just seeing the other's heart smile. I had a testimony of a young lady that got baptized. You know, I met her through one of my clients. And come to find out, the whole family got baptized. And it makes my heart smile to see that she is truly running for the Lord. Just because she got baptized, she preaching and teaching on, on Facebook, giving d different posts and things. She even reached her family out in, back in her home state. And she leading this woman to Christ and, you know, off the street, you know, evangelism, you know, my heart is smiling because, you know, it wasn't vain glory. Just speaking into my client got a whole family baptized and a whole family turned back to the Lord and she's on fire. She's running, running for the Lord. I can see her doing big things. I can see her with her own channel. I can see her, you know, God taking her further. She's got, you know, she's radical for Christ. She's going out there. She's going all in. So that makes my heart smile to know that my efforts weren't in vain. Not that we think that they're in vain anyway, but to actually see somebody get it and and take, you know, get with God and run with him. I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just trying to do my job. Wasn't even looking for it. That's how we need to be living testimonies. You know, we need to walk in this thing. You know, we can't just run around and talk about we gonna go wait till we, you know, go knock on doors and stuff like that. Time out for that. Y'all know how we treated the Jehovah Witness every time we seen him standing at the door. Plus, we go on to people that ain't looking for it. They ain't hungry. They ain't thirsty for it. You know, 
look for the people. Well, actually, you ain't got to look for them because they're looking for you. The people that's coming to you asking you about the hope that lies within you. Those are the ones. Those are the grounds that's, that's fertile. Those are the grounds that want to know. But just going out there, Bible thumping people, you run people off. I'm just saying. Let's go. Uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy. You gotta. You can't be one that's holding grudges. You can't be one that you know putting stuff on people, and you don't never live it down. You know when they do something, you gotta have mercy. Because if God never let you live the things down that you done, where would you be? Think about it. If God treated people the way you treat people, how would you be treated? Where would you be? We got to have grace and mercy for others, not just give, you know, for us. The same grace and mercy that God gives for us, we got to extend to others. For they shall obtain mercy. Like I say, we got to have mercy. If I'm never letting somebody live down the sin or or a mistake that they made, then God is never going to let me live down something that i done. But if I want mercy from the Lord for the things that I've done, I got to be able to give mercy to others for the things that, you know, others may do that hurt us. So we talking about brokenness. In brokenness, we got to have mercy because people hurt us. They say things, they do things, and they hurt us. And we take offense. We take it personal. But we got to have grace. And we got to have mercy. We can't want to kill them. We can't want to go, you know, you know, you kill the flesh, but you kill the soul. You can't separate the flesh from the soul. You can't want to just run off and kill everybody just because they hurt you. What I do is I give them to the Lord. I just cast my my burdens, my cares upon him. Tell him all about it. And he handles it justly. He's a, a just God. That's all That's all he do. You know, I pray blessings and favor over him. But you know, you don't know what bless God's blessings and favor. Because he going to vindicate you. If you want his, he going to vindicate you. So you ain't got to worry about holding grudges and stuff. You got to have mercy. Let God get them. Let God take care of them. He say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Let God, do, he, he can do it better than you can. There have been several times things have happened. And God has taken care of it better than I ever could thought or imagine. So, some even to the point I don't have to see others no more. So, like I say, we got to have mercy and let God do the vindicating. Let God do, you know, the getting them back or the revenge or whatever, vengeance or whatever. Because he know how to do it. We can't. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We got to be pure. We got to be real. You know, God knows our heart. We got. We can't be out here faking this thing. We got to love for real. Not put that perpetrate love on. You know, like you love somebody just because you're trying to get something out of them. You know, men love women because they're trying to get, you know, favors or, you know, sex or anything. You know, women do the same thing. They be trying to get in a man's pocket. But, you know, we need to love people for real, genuinely. Um, not just because you're trying to get over on somebody or get something out of them. We need to make sure that we love for real. Because if you get all you can get out of that person, that person may find out be done. But the, the time that you really need something, that person going to be too hurt. They ain't, ain't going to be there for you. We need to do this thing for real. Because God has a way of making you need that person before they need you again. So we need to make sure that we are real. That we are, you know, we're pure in heart in our actions and what we do with people. We're not sitting here lying just trying to get over. We're not trying to 
rub shoulders, you know, with a female. I'm talking to the men now. It's time out for that rubbing shoulders with a female just so you can get in her pocketbook, but you ain't got no intentions on being with her. You ain't got no future in mind with her. You just trying to say whatever sounds good to make her feel good, to get what you want that makes you feel good. It's time to be genuine because a, a woman scorn, that ain't nothing nice. Yeah, and I have no sympathy on those and I have no empathy on those either because they brought it on themselves. Now, I do pray forgiveness, you know, and mercy, you know, for those individuals. But when I see men going through stuff that they brought on themselves, I have no sympathy, none whatsoever. Because had they been truthful, had they been real in the first place. And I'm sure this works with women too. But I'm saying from my perspective is I'm a female. I don't do that. So I can't relate to that. But I can relate to it being done to. I can relate to being used. Just, you know, for any and everything. But I have no intentions on taking it further. Just, just the hand of me. So I have no pity for those. They come to me, to God be the glory. They come to me, God bless you. And I go on by my business. You know, I have, you know, I have no pity, no sorrow. I have no, no emotion towards that. When they found out, they found out. And I have no, you know, remorse. I have no pity, no because you can have what you say you know you teach people how to treat you and when you teach when you treat people that way and that comes back on you you know do on others as you have them do on you and if you robbing and stealing and and fabricating and lying and trying to get all next to this woman just to get some ends or something out of her hand and you don't have no intentions with her, and then that comes back on you. Do on to others as you'd have them do on to you. That's scripture. Suck it up and move forward. That's all I have to say about that. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. It's the ones that's running around trying to make peace, not discord, not running around trying to, you know, cause confusion gossip. These are the ones that's shutting it down. These are the ones that's walking away. These are the ones that's not entertaining that stuff. These are the ones that's staying at home if need be because they don't want to be in the middle of mess. So they're blessed. They the children of God. They ain't running around here trying to stir up with the devil or the enemy. You know, they ain't being a tool for the enemy. That's why they the children of God. They on the Lord's side. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You persecuted for doing what thus saith the Lord. You being persecuted for righteousness sake. You go inherit the kingdom of heaven. So. To be persecuted for righteousness sake. Is a, is a good thing. Because. It, know, it shows that you're on the Lord's side. You just got to stick with him. He'll vindicate you. He'll take care of you. He'll comfort you. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. People going to talk about you. They talked about him. People going to say all kind of stuff to slander your name, to try to you know, get people to turn against you and everything. They're going to do you just the way they did him. Don't think you're going to come in here and not and get treated better than he was treated. So just get used to it. Expect it. Prepare yourself for it. Don't take it personal because it's not towards you. It's towards him. All you got to do is walk in him. Walk in his glory. That's all you got to do is walk in him. Um, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you 
when you rejoice, you be really glad on the inside. Exceedingly glad. Because you know that your reward is in heaven. And don't worry about, you know, them that prosecuted you. You know, you storing up your reward in heaven. You just know that you're on the Lord's side. And as long as you're doing what thus says the Lord, you don't have to worry about it because all this stuff going to pass away. That's why I walk and I do, you know, I walk the walk and I do what I do. And I don't care who like me and who don't. I don't care who is with me and who's not. You know, ain't nobody going in that box but me when that time comes. You know, they say you need six pallbearers, but nowadays you really don't even need that. You know, but make sure you got one one person. That's God, the one that you serving. That's what you need to make sure. Um, let's see. The next scripture is barely, John twelve twenty four. Verily, bear I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Anything that dies is better because you die to the flesh. You have to die to the flesh in order for God to be manifest in you. You know, he's not going to be beside you. You got to give him full reign and control of your vessel. So if a corn of, uh, if a, a corn, where is that? If a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it dies alone, yes. But as it dies and stays died, it, it goes into the soil. It, what you call, fertilizes the soil. It makes the soil better, makes the soil richer so that it can bring forth much fruit for the others. You know, they say better, worth more dead than, than living. That's true. In this case, that's true. Whatever dies and goes back to the earth, cultivates the earth, fertilizes the earth, enriches, nourishes the earth, replenishes the earth. So, it produces more fruit. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 through 10. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us as in Asia, that we were pleased out, that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raises the dead who delivered us from such great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us God is the only one that can raise the dead God uses vessels in talking about a spiritual death, depression. God is the only one. The Spirit of God, the Word of God is the only one that can raise the dead. Can make you, bring you out of that depression. You know, clinical depression is real. That's somebody that has a negative mindset that feels hopeless, worthless, you know, and is on a spiral downward and they can't get out of it. Only God can bring you out of that. You got to get to the word. You got to get to the anointing. You got to get to to listening to life. Somebody be speak life into you. Speak the word of God into you. Um, death can press down. You know, depression can press down. Um, anxiety, you know, can make you, you know, all over the place. You know, mental illness is real. To think that we ain't, to, you know, that what you call the second guessing ourselves, that we can't trust ourselves. That's a trick of the enemy. We ought to be able to trust ourselves 
We ought to know that we, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. If anything, we know that we got God on the inside of us. We ought to be able to trust ourselves because we trust the God in us. He'll deliver us. We, we must trust that he'll, he's the deliverer. Let's go to... Um, Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ. Crucified, which means everything they did to him, they're going to do to you. You are crucified with him. You stand for righteousness, his righteousness. You are persecuted with him. And you persecuted for righteousness sake. Nevertheless, you live. That means you keep continue on. You keep doing what thus saith the Lord. The back, no matter what they crucify you, no matter what they say about you, no matter how they slander your name, no matter how they steal from you, no matter how they treat you, no matter what they do to you, you still live. You still continue to walk in the crucifixion with Christ. You still continue to, to do the purpose and the will of the Father. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And you all do it because of his strength. Because he lives in you. you we can't do this without him. If you're not spirit-filled, you don't have the Lord on the inside. First of all, if you ain't gave your life over to Christ, you can't do it without him. This is not something that you can do by yourself in your own strength. It's just not. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Like I always talk about my lifestyle, my testimony is how God has me living. I don't live a subservient lifestyle. As a single mom, I just don't believe. If I got God, I don't believe that I can live. A, I have to live a subservient lifestyle. I can believe that I can live a blessed lifestyle according to my faith, according to his riches and glory. You know, sometimes we got to elevate our faith. You know, you got the faith of God today, but, you know, God has more. Elevate. Let God expand your faith. You know. I live by the faith the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. We, do we believe that? Do we believe that Christ died and gave himself for us? Or do we believe it's just a fairy tale? Just a story? It's all in what you believe. Your belief is what motivates you. Whatever you believe in, that's what is motivating you. If it's negative, that's why you motivated to do negative stuff and think negative and be in negative environments. But if it's Christ, Christ motivates you. He gives you the activity of your limbs. He wakes you up in the morning. And from the time you get up to the time you lay back down or fall out, he's the one that's, that's motivating you to do whatever. He's orchestrating. He's ordering your steps through the day. We got to turn to him. James 4 and 6 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Here we talk about grace again. He giveth more grace. You know, we remember grace is the unmerited favor of God. That means he gives the unmerited favor. He gives more of the unmerited favor of himself. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud. He, he don't want you puffed up. He don't want the prideful. You know, he don't want those that, that think they, you know, smelling they self. They can do it on their own. You know, that's why he hated Esau. Esau, he was a, he was a hunter. He figured he could fend for himself. He didn't need God. He was, you know, he go out there and kill the animals and, you know, he knew how to cook and make stuff. He, he knew how to prepare things for his family. He felt he didn't need God to provide for him. That's why God hated Esau.
because he was self-righteous. He was all in himself. He didn't need God. He, he could do it himself. He didn't realize that even the activity of his limbs, he still needed God. Um, resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Those that's humble, they're precious. We need to help them. We need to, you know, connect with the humble ones. You know, let our light so shine among men. You know, with the humble ones. Let them grab, they'll latch on, and then this thing will grow. You know, be fruitful and multiply. You know, speak life. That's fruit. The speak life is always seed life into other people. And as they go out and, and spread life to others, this thing will grow. Last one, um, James 5 and 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Confess your faults one to another. That don't mean you got to go and confess, you know, all your business to somebody. You know, if you have a fault or somebody did something against you or whatever, you know, you you confess your faults. Um, somebody that you trust, somebody that you confide in, just don't tell everybody your business. But confess your faults one to another. Somebody that's trustworthy. Somebody that's credible. You know. You know, let them know. That way, you know, maybe they have a word of life. You know, they can speak life into your situation. Help you. Pray with you. Pray for you. Um, and pray one for another. That's the next part. Pray one for another. You pray for them and they as they pray for you. And it's time out for just praying for ourselves and not for others and then it's time out for praying for everybody else and don't pray for yourself what profits a man to save the world and lose his own soul how you gonna pray for everybody else and not pray for your own self your own situation you waiting on somebody to pray for your situation people they lie they say oh I'm gonna pray I'm praying you don't know what they praying if they praying so learn to pray for yourself learn to have a personal relationship with God where you can talk to God for yourself. Um, that they may, you may be healed. That's healed mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Prayer. Pray one for another. It says the factual, the factual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Make sure you're righteous. Not in your own righteousness, but put on his righteousness. The blessed prayer of righteousness. Put on God's righteousness. And pray. You can pray. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. As you pray, are you being righteous? You walking in the things of God. You doing what thus said the Lord. You allowing him to use your vessel to do what he wants to do in your life. You can pray and ask for anything and it'll be added unto you. Anything that's in his will. Make sure it's in his will. So, time out for just letting life happen. We need to start praying to God. When stuff hits, I, that's the first thing I do as I go to God. When people do me wrong, first thing I do is go to God. You know, I, I take it to him because I know he created them. And he know what they need more than I do. Plus, he know how to deal with them without me messing around and killing them, they spirit, and then I got to pay for that. I got to answer for that. So, I just get quiet and I start praying. You know, when people do me wrong, when people, you know, talk crazy, treat me, when they immature and stuff like that, I just give it to God. And next thing you know, they're going through so much hell that they don't know what to do. Well, that'll lead them to pray. So they'll get back to God, which is what I wanted in the first place. They'll get back to God and get a prayer life and a personal relationship with God to where God will come and restore them. And that's what all I wanted in the first place. You may or may not ever get an apology when people treat you wrong or do you wrong, do you wrong. But you ain't looking for that. You're looking for them to get into the, to the kingdom. You're looking for them to get back with God. That's what you're looking for. 
It's better to look for that than to look for them to apologize because there are some that just won't. Narcissists will not apologize. They won't. If you sitting there waiting for them to apologize, you sitting there wasting your life. Sitting there holding a grudge on your way to hell because you waiting on them to do something. Well, that's a that's brokenness today. I'm gonna pop off of here. It didn't tell us that long this time. Um, I just wanted to come on here and go through the scriptures on brokenness. Because there's a lot of people that's that's hurting, that's broken. You know, they're they're feeling broken. You know, get back to God. He's the one that can restore. That's who who you know who you gotta get back to. You know, like I say, anytime, you know, everybody most people think Dr. Bell don't go through nothing. Because I always got my face on. But Dr. Bell goes through. Yeah. And I, I kind of keep quiet because I got a mouth. And I be done said some, praise some, prophesied something that I'm going to have to answer for, feel bad for later. So I just get to myself. I stay to myself. Um, like I say, brokenness. Make sure you got grace and mercy for those individuals that hurt you. You got to. You got to keep your 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 lines clear to God. Your prayer lines clear to God. Don't let nothing hinder your prayers from God. Nothing. Nothing is worth coming in between you and God. Don't put a hairball or a banana in the tailpipe, as my apostle say. <laughs> but don't no, let nothing come between you and God. Not a grudge. Not unforgiveness. Not nothing. Nobody. Or nothing, nothing is worth coming between you and God. Not, not a zilch. So let the grudge go. You know, make sure, you know, don't make people answer for the rest of their life something that they done or whatever. Um, because whatever you do to others, God is, will do to you or let be allowed be done to you. You know, it's a boomerang effect. Whatever, however we treat others, that's how others are going to treat us. That's that's the law. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So if you are charging an individual for something that they did to you to hurt you, then somebody else is going to do that to you. You don't want to be charged for that. You want to be forgiven and you want to be, you know, restored. So don't treat other people like that. I understand, you know, you want them to suffer. You want them to make sure that um, they don't forget what they did. So maybe they don't do it again. But you know what? People aren't perfect. They've been made to perfection. If it ain't that thing they do, they could do something else. So what you going to do? Hold that against them too? But pretty soon you be so bound trying to hold stuff against people to where you don't know what to do. To where you can't even live or breathe. Stop holding grudges. Let it go. Release it. People hold grudges on me and I be just as free and they be making them mad. Because they be trying to hold stuff on me and I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. I could care less. Really. They always, you know, talking about people. They got a grudge or they going to release me or whatever. I could care less. Because number one, if I did something. It's because God told me to do it. I don't run around sowing discord. I don't I, I don't run around trying to hurt people and stuff like that. So if people are mad because they didn't have their way or get their way with me, God bless them. I ain't gonna let nobody bound me or hold me bound on nothing. Nothing. So they just be sitting up there bound themselves on their way to hell by themselves because I ain't gonna let nobody control me. Like I say, brokenness. Broken people try to control because they feel like they've lost control either of their life or a certain area of their life. Um, especially people going through divorce and stuff like that. They trying to, you know, get bounds and stuff. And then you got those that act like they going through the divorce, but they just trying to come up another way. 
that's another story, another message. I'm going to get off of here and go take care of some business and everything. And um, y'all stay blessed.